Hello there, Aku here again. This is going to be a little series on how to make valuable bees. Not so much the breeding of the bees themselves, but how to get yourself in a position where you um, you can make the bees and everything that's needed to um, facilitate that. So, without further ado, let's crack on. Um, in this first episode, I am not even going to touch bees. I'm just going to um, show a couple of things that you need to get in place before you even think about think about it. Um, quickly, we'll look at these machines. I'm not going to say what they are yet, so I don't want to overwhelm anyone. But these are extra bees things. These use bee DNA, which you can see here. Um, what I want to show you these for is because if you look at this power bar here, you can see that they've got a usage of 100 mg a tick, these purifiers. A max input of 2000 mg a tick, which is wild. And um, synthesizers, half that amount, 50 mg a tick. So, my point here is you're going to need a lot of buildcraft power. Um, especially if you're using your buildcraft power for other stuff. I'm running thermal expansion um, machines there for my ore processing. And I'm running three quarries off my buildcraft power at the minute. So, um, I didn't want my bees to impact on that, so quite early on I planned to make two full size steam boilers, which I've got here, 36 industrial steam engines, each producing 8 mg a tick, gives me a total of uh, 288 mg a tick, I'm running this off um, saplings, for which I've got a forestry tree farm. Um, if you're doing bees, I recommend you use saplings rather than sugar cane or any other thing because the wood comes in very useful as well. So, if you've got a tree farm, I'm going to quickly show you my tree farm. Tree farm there, it's a new type of forestry tree farm. That's, um, that was running oak trees, but I was getting too many apples to process. The hopper in there kept getting filled up, so I switched to birch. So now I'm just getting wood and saplings, which does be fine. So the saplings go into there, just in case you don't know how this works, I'll quickly run over it. Saplings go into a fermenter. Also, you need to feed in fertilizer, which I'm using a uh, tesseract there, and water, which I've got liquid tesseract. So three inputs. Sapling, fertilizer, water, gives you biomass. It pumps into a biomass tank there. From the biomass tank, I've got a couple of stills. Stills process biomass into biofuel, biofuel tank there. And then liquid tesseract pumps biofuel into the back of the boiler. So there's another tesseract up there. And boiler also needs water, so there's liquid tesseract pushing water in. So um, that's the fuel setup. Producing, producing plenty of power so that when you do get to this stage where you're going to be manipulating bee genetics later on, you've got plenty of power and you don't affect your quarry speed or anything else. You may be running all assembly table, this is build craft power of course, or your ore process, ore processing, yeah, processing, so you don't want to get anything backed up. So yeah, that's the first thing. Second thing I want to cover in this episode is this stuff. Seed oil. You're going to need a hell of a lot of seed oil. So you're going to want to set up some kind of way of producing seed oil. Um, my way is a melon farm. Melon in a crafting table breaks down into melon seeds. Um, I used to use wheat and use the wheat for the um, fuel production but you don't get a lot of fuel from the wheat and you don't get a lot of seeds from the wheat so it seems better to have a separate tree farm for the fuel and a melon farm for the seeds. Um, melons get pushed into the air from our sorting system because this is a valid inventory because of the filter so I'll sh I'm going to show you how I run my melon farm and I don't do it the forestry way. I um, 
it was Thonecraft. And I recommend to anyone to get into a certain amount of Thonecraft, even if you don't, if it's not the kind of thing you enjoy. Um, just doing tier one and a little bit extra gets you a lot of useful stuff. Uh, tier one, this stuff here. Then the extra. Um, once you've done tier one, you can make all these tools, which are all very useful. Axe of the stream can cut a full tree down just by hitting the bottom block. It's very nice. Um, Wand of Equal Trade, it's one of my main building tools, I love this, um, it never leaves my bar, as you can see it's down there number 3. Um, once you've done tier 1, it opens up all this stuff, and what you want to do, at the minimum, is Golemancy and Straw Golem, and I'm going to show you why in a second. Also, if you want to go and, um, you're going to want to do this anyway at some point, because the Iron Golems can wet wonders in a um, XP farm so it's it's useful stuff it's definitely worth looking into so I'll show you why I am um, right across here this is a little underground area that I uh, do stuff in so I've got a lot of melons here um, which is not being processed at the minute because I've got no need of them at the minute but Wood golem and a straw golem. This straw golem is a smart version, which could replant crops, but for a melon farm, that's not needed. A standard, standard wood golem and a standard straw golem works fine for this. What you need to do is um, your straw golem's your farmer. You place him just in the middle of your melon crop, and your wood golem collects things, puts things into chests. And what's really nice is you can put things straight into item tesseracts, so you don't even need a chest here. Just plonk him on the item tesseracts. This goes to my sorting system. From there, melons either go into barrels, or if I block the barrel, the melons go into the seed production. So I'll just quickly jump back. See, melons are coming into the pipes now. At the minute, as I said, they're going into that... Um, barrel there but if I was producing producing air seed oil at the minute my tank's full so I'm not I just put a cover across the top of that barrel and um, that would mean melons come down here produce plenty of seed oil so you can do this before you even touch any bees and the reason why um, in fact before we carry on I'll just cover what you need here the machine you need is called a squeezer very simple to make um, Seeds go in there, squeezes it, turns them into seed oil. Seed oil, obviously, just standard pump into a tank. Uh, well, liquid ducts with a lever. Pump into the tank. Um, squeeze there. Made like so. Just tin, glass, and a steady casing. Steady casing, just eight bronze in a square. Forestry stuff, forestry stuff, use a lot of these. My tongue's all tied this morning, I don't know why. Keep tripping over it. Um, so yeah, actually squeeze it. The next bit of equipment you're going to need is a carpenter. This is made similar, I believe it's just... Um, yep, it's just bronze in places, a tin on the side, so it's the same steady casing. In this case, it's bronze and glass rather than tin and glass. And this is what you need the seed oil for. There's two recipes of importance in this. That's the second recipe. That's an, an impregnated stick. The first recipe, if I just get some wood. Is that recipe an impregnated casing? So I'll show you them in any eye. Impregnated casing. This everything that houses a bee needs one of these in it. You can see the recipes that these go into. Uh, apiaries and alvary blocks. Both need one. So you need I recommend at least sixteen or so apiaries and then you need 
If you want to set up similar to mine, you're going to need a lot of um, alvary blocks. It's 27 for each alvary. I've got 18 alvaries, so a lot of blocks. Um, so yeah, that's what you need for that. Um, so you can start making, you can start planning this beforehand, start getting some apiaries made. And also to speed up your production of bees. So the other recipe was impregnated sticks. And impregnated sticks go into impregnated frames. A frame is just eight sticks with um, a bit of string around it. If you look at my earlier apiary video, you'll see I had an auto crafting table here and a, a chest full of sticks. I was feeding impregnated frames into an item tesseract, which was sending it up to the roof and filling a barrel. So I had lots of um, lots of item for it, uh, lots of impregnated frames. You can go one step further. Um, I've since found out. Um, you can use a Thumbcraft Golem that can take from the bottom of the barrels and you can assign them to input into the air periods, I think. Depends where, depends which slot it is in, in inside the frame. So I'm not sure if that'll work, to be honest. No, ignore, ignore that. I don't think that'll work. It should work for our varies. But I don't think it will for APRs. I'll test that and um, I'll see if it works. So yeah, that's so that's what you want your seed oil for, and that's what you want to be making. So you start making a stock of that, and then once you've got that kind of stuff, you can actually go into making there uh, to um, breeding some bees. Now there's a couple of little bits of kit you need before you actually start. I've got some of them bits in here. Um, you need a scoop. Scoops fairly straightforward stick, a bit of wool, makes you a scoop. This is how you get bees out of the hives in the world. You'll see the, the hives scattered around the world. Um, you're going to need a bealizer. Now a bealizer, made in a carpenter with water this time. So you're now going to want to switch the fluid input to your carpenter or a separate one. I have a, I have a separate one that gets water over here. Bealizer, one diamond, some tin, some glass, some redstone. And what that does is a very important bit of kit, bee breeding. I'm sure you've seen it on other videos. This lets you drop a bee in. Why don't I just drop a bee in? Um, these are a couple of bees I've modified to an extent. These are what I call my uh, blanks. I just all I need to do is imprint a species onto these to make them into something else. I've got all the other stats that I like like them to be. So you see the bealizer, you can see what stats things have. And so on. Um, the stats I like to run, obviously longest lifespan. You have to breed to get that. Fast is the fastest production speed you can get if you're using forestry or extra bees. To get any, to take the fastest, you need thalmic bees. Um, Slower pollen just is the flowers that grow around. I have that set on slowest. I don't know if that's important. If it is important, um, and that, that should be fastest, there. Uh, someone could let me know. I'd appreciate it. Um, these are rocky bees. They all start off as stone, but I like flowers, so I change them to flowers. Uh, fertility on one because all that does is produces one princess, one drone. Because I had a massive excess of bees, so I don't need that. I don't need extra bees, extra drones. Um, Area leaf standard, effects none, it's fine. Um, you want to get rid of poison and stuff, so uh, that's, that's all right. And then the rocky bees are really good because they have all these stats as yes, so they can work at night, they can work in the rain, and they can work indoors. And they've got good tolerances, they can go up or down two levels, so it can go in normal, it can go in. Dry, wet, cold, hot, they're, they're very good. Rocky bees are wonderful. So you only use rocky bees as your template. So if you're running quarries, you'll be getting a lot of rocky princesses and drones. And the drones are not so important, but you want to be keeping a good amount of the princesses. You want to use them as your, as your um, use them for breeding a, a bit, but you want to be saving a lot of them for uh, making into your final bees. Um, one other bit of kit 
before you get started with actual bees, that's very useful to have, and I've got upstairs, is this thing. It is called, I believe, a data bank. The Apiris data bank. That's made with, this is a bit more advanced, this is an extra bees thing, I believe. It uses an Apiris, mach Apiris machine, which is one of those steady casings again. Copper, and this time it's instead of glass, it has redstone. Um, some glass, a bit of redstone, and an Apiris database. This is the same thing, but a handheld version, like the Bealizer. It's a similar recipe to the Bealizer. It's just, uh, you've got a bit of gold instead of two of the silvers, and um, you've got an emerald instead of one of the glasses. So, that's that. But this thing, invaluable. What this does, whenever you've bred, if I'd, if I'd just started this server, this would all be empty. Any bees that you've bred, you get the stats in here. So forest bees gives you the base stats. So if I look at them rocky bees that I just showed you, if I was to look at a standard rocky bee, you can see what I've changed. I've changed the speed. I've changed the lifespan. Uh, I've changed the flower. So that bee downstairs is not. You can see it's not a standard rocky bee anymore. So. Um, it shows you what things produce, so if I go to valuable, you can see it produces platinum combs, which is what we're after. Climate's not so important because you can breed in, you can genetically manipulate climates. But it is worth stating that when you start off doing this, you probably want to be in a normal normal. The way you can tell if something's normal normal, to get quickly sidetracked, is if you make your first apiary just place it down wherever your base is if you look at it what you want is normal normal there um, it makes it much easier for bee breeding to have you to have you set up in a normal normal biome you can do it in other biomes but it's just extra hassle that you don't really need um, just for the sake of clarity I'm going to wear uh, I've got a snowy biome quite near me. So you can see how that changes. I'll place that there. And see, temperature icy and the humidity is still normal. So if I was in this zone, I could really only produce starting off winter, wintery bees and stuff because uh, of the temperature constraints. So yeah, look for normal, normal and uh, you should be fine so yeah so that was a bit of a side track there let's get back to it the next thing is now these two are the important ones resultant mutations are the things that you need to get to the next step obviously a forest would have one because that's a straight from the hive so anything that's bred, so the first thing you're going to be able to breed is common, which is just a mixture of any two, what they call mundane beans, which is the ones you find in the world. So examples of that is a forest princess and a meadows drone. Look, there's a chance, it shows you there, 15% chance of creating a common. So this is how you find out how you, how you make stuff. And then, obviously, the further mutations are the things that can come from this. So, a common, bred with a forest, or a meadows, or lots of other stuff, can produce a cultivated. So, this bit of kit's brilliant. What you want to do, and this is, it could be classed as a bit cheaty, but you want to um, go into a single-player creative world. You spawn yourself in a thing called... That one, Master Apiris Database, a flora in a box, named after Flora Star, who knows more about bees than the forestry and uh, extra bees authors, I think. Spawn that one in, and essentially what that is, it's, it's one of these, but it's fully populated, so you can see what's what. So to find out how to create valuable bees, all you've got to do is go down, click on valuable, click on the resultant mutations, and you see that a valuable is achieved by mixing a glycerin and an ender. 
so then you can work out right so i need ender bees i need glittering bees if you click on the glittering you can see the glittering's made with a resolute and a noble so on click on the resolute you need a corroded and a tarnished so you can with a with notepad or something or a pen and paper you can write down the path you need to take to get from forestry uh, to forest and meadows or whatever right the way through to your valuable bees which i'm going to cover but um that's how i found out how to do it you can do it trial and error but when you've got with trial and error when you've only got 15 percent chances you can up that with stuff but um trial and error you might have to try several times to even see if you get a bee and there's that many different species i think trial and error is a bit a bit um silly if there is a way where you can actually find out the path you need to take there's there's so many species if there's only like seven or eight species then trial and error i think it'd be nice to go so so standard forestry trial and error is fine i think extra bees there's that many species i think you're best off going and creative looking at your target species so if you wanted you see i've got no diamond here because uh, i've not i've not researched diamonds i've not bred diamond bees so it's not there say if you wanted uh, lapis which i might do at some point um you can see that to get a lapis bee you need to combine a resilient bee and a water bee so that bit of kit very useful once you've got all these bits of kit then you can start actually breeding bees i guess so we'll pick that up in the next episode thank you very much for watching bye